What's up, guys? Welcome to this episode of Beers and Breakdowns. Oh, yeah. Today, <laughs> today, just get ready to laugh along with us because that's what we're breaking down is this amazing, one of the best war movies ever made, Tropic Thunder. Cinematic masterpiece. Genius. I love this movie. Dude, this movie is so good. We're basically just going to drink and laugh along with you guys. So kick back. Grab a drink if you're 21 or older, drink responsibly, and have fun with us because we're going to get some booty sweat. Hey. Hey. <laughs> as much as we're going to laugh and have fun during this episode of Tropic Thunder, just know that there are a lot of seriousness going on in the FNG Academy. So we use beers and breakdowns to just let loose and have a good time. Every once in a while, we just want to have some drinks, watch some movies, enjoy ourselves, and throw it up on the old tubes for you guys. But just know that we're working our butts off on the back end uh, when we really are focused on the business. It's intense. We have products that we're developing constantly to help you guys get selected, to help you train. If you just want to be fitter, faster, and more prepared in 2023, we are going to help you. We got a mentor program. Kurt is running that. We have multiple Green Berets who are on standby to help you, guide you through the process, and make sure that you are ready to go. Nobody is doing more to help you guys get selected than the FNG Academy. So remember that. As we start drinking and having a good time, talking about the movie, just know that on the back end, every dollar that you guys give to us is going back into the business to help you guys get selected, conquer your dreams, uh, achieve your goals, and be a better you. So thank you for your support. We appreciate it. Now let's have some fun and watch Tropic Thunder. Boom. What's that one with Brad Pitt or with um, Bruce Willis? <laughs> Yo, tell me that uh, song wasn't from the Bruce Willis the, when they're being serious. What's that one? I don't know. Oh, come on. The Bruce Willis one. With, they go in to save the uh, reporter. Or not the reporter, the humanitarian. Oh, Tears, of the Tears of the Sun. I don't know. That was a perfect Tears of the Sun like song mock when he's like, yeah. ah. It was a beautiful scene. Dude, beautiful <laughs> scene. They mocked all military movies perfectly. Yeah. I've seen so many bad war movies at this point that that could have passed as a regular scene in like a Netflix war movie. That yeah. Was True. Last one. And I, I think that's a, I don't know, maybe my appreciation for this is even more now that we've seen so many bad yes. movies that now that it's like making a spoof and making fun of it, but doing it better than the movies. Better that we're than trying the to actual be movies. Yes. This is, I I love this movie. This movie is phenomenal. You don't know how hard it is for movies to get war scenes right, but then to get war scene right, and then go over and make fun of it yeah. in a tasteful way. Think about everything that they're doing in this movie. They're making fun of war movies. That is extremely hard to do without being overly offensive. Yeah. They're being. <laughs> They're saying the R overtly word. Racist. They're being overtly They're being overtly offensive. But they do it so perfectly that everyone loved this movie. What, what I loved about this movie, and I took a screenshot, is like when you watch it, it's got, when it tells you what it's rated, is just the words. So it says it's rated 16 plus, and the reasons it gives is nudity, mm -hmm. violence, blackface, substance <laughs> abuse, <laughs> alcohol use, Smoking, foul language, and sexual content. It it's got says, everything you want in a movie. <laughs> <laughs> Including blackface. It says blackface. It says blackface. Oh my gosh. Like but people, it does it so well that it's not like you don't it's not offensive. It's not offensive. He's trying to be engulfed in the character. So he's like trying to stay in character, no matter what the character is. He, and in this character just happens to be a black guy. He's just a dude. Playing a dude disguised as another dude. dude. Yeah. Like, that's all it is. <laughs> what do you mean, you people? <laughs> it's the best, dude. They, if you guys haven't watched this recently, everyone loves Tropic Thunder. I know you love Tropic Thunder. Watch it again. Yes. Watch it again after it's been a while, especially if you're a fan of Beers and Breakdowns and all the crap movies we have to watch, <laughs> and just how amazing they did. I mean, this movie, Robert Downey Jr. talked about it on Joe Rogan 
about how if his mom told him not to do blackface, she was like, don't do that movie. Please don't do that movie. <laughs> and even then, it was a Hail Mary pass because they knew they are going to ride that line so hard yep. that it was either going to be flop or a complete home run. So this, I, I want to say, what, 2013? Around there? Right? For the movie? I don't know. It was early 2010s, like, like, in that time, which, I mean... Pretty like on the cusp as far as being really offensive. You know how some things are acceptable in certain mm-hmm. time periods and not in later. This is like riding that line for sure. So and I it think was it, it a was risk for him. Huge risk. And I think it was just so unexpected for Robert Downey Jr. just to show up and be like, he's this Australian <laughs> who's dressed as a black guy. <laughs> and then the and then all of it does and then the rapper who's supposed to be about booties and vagina, but he calls it which we can't say. <laughs> then you got this rapper. That's a hard P. You got this this rapper who's supposed to be all gangster and about booty and all this stuff, and he's like sensitive and gay. They just took the exact opposite of everything right. and just completely blew it out. It it was awesome. And then another hilarious is Jack Black. Oh, I love Jack who Black. Does, in this movie. Who does his Eddie Murphy, uh, oh, the, the same the, member the, of the whole family? <laughs> The farts are, but then the yeah the, the farts fats. the farts and then he ends up being a this major cokehead who's like completely addicted and looking for the heroin, dude. Just brilliant. Awesome, it's brilliant. All right, pause. So there's not much like realism that we could talk about, but Mass Sergeant Benavides. Oh yeah. So he's an actual SF like hero Vietnam where he was got shot multiple times carrying uh, wounded soldiers yeah. onto the bird for a medevac. Roy Benavides, Google him. Yeah, so he's like, an absolute legend in the SF community. If you plan on going special forces, you have to know Master Sergeant Benavidez. Um, just incredible story about how he pretty much did this actual thing to where he risked himself to get uh, wounded onto the exfil chopper and then took multiple rounds in the process of moving their bodies and kept going back to get more people. To the point, from. he was actually put in a body bag at one point because they thought he was dead. And you can read it. He's a Medal of Honor recipient. You can read his citation. Awesome, awesome story. And yeah. that's the one movie that I cannot wait to see. I want them to make a movie about him one day. Oh, they have to. That'd be so bad. That'd be awesome. You know what's crazy is this whole time I've always thought, like, why do SEALs get so much love and the Green Berets have never had it quite as much, you mm-hmm. know? Not that we're looking for all the attention, but it's still an interesting thing because clearly there's a difference. Right, yeah. And then I watched... Navy SEALs with Charlie Sheen. Pretty good movie. Dude, it was awesome, (laughs) dude. It was so good. (laughs) I now realize that Charlie Sheen is the exact reason for the SEALs reputation. He was beautiful in that movie. He crushed it. And so from then on, they're like, oh, we need more SEALs. Yeah, if Charlie Sheen was a Green Beret in in that movie and it was about Green Berets, Charlie Sheen would have gave us the... the, the, it would, it would have been our spotlight at it would, that point. Yeah. The, what, is, what am I saying? The reputation. There you go. It would have been our reputation instead of the seal. So, But we'll get to that movie. But now I understand. It wasn't the lure of the water. It wasn't the seal reveal. It wasn't all that <laughs> bullshit. It was Charlie Sheen. Charlie, it was Charlie Sheen, man. America's he did it. America's hero. America's hero. He did it for the seals. So all of you should be thanking Charlie Sheen right now for highlighting Navy SEALs. <laughs> He spit. <laughs> you are my boot. You are my boot. You are my boot. <laughs> All right, that's all. I'm going to teach you how to charge. The other one, 
Was it, did I watch an edited version or was it this one where it was like talking about the stand up band or the band? He's like, I'll play the stand up bass. And, and Bruce, uh, what's his name? Vince was like, and I'll be tickling the ivories. Was that a different version? I, it's been a long time since I've seen I don't know if there is another version. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe he says it after. I just love how he spits when he's crying. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, <laughs> I think this movie, I think the, the runaway actor in this is Robert Downey Jr. He definitely killed Dude, it in he this movie. he killed it. I don't know if he's ever killed it like he's killed. Like, obviously, Iron Man is incredible. But comedic-wise, comedy-wise, he just, like, found his rhythm in this. He's, he's on, yeah, he's on. Unbelievable. Every turn, like, it's awesome. Everything he did, it was almost like he just, he felt that lightning in a bottle, and he was like, my career's probably over after this, it was so a, I'm sending yeah, it. It was a full send, like Dude, full commitment to full everything. Full send. Like, I believe that he is an Australian in blackface oh, yeah. <laughs> playing a black guy that's way too deep into the world. Yeah. He's just, awesome. a, he's just a method actor. That's all he is. Animals was a box office disaster <laughs> that many critics one. <laughs> called one of the worst movies of all time. <laughs> I ain't got a good, good, good brain. <laughs> I think you've got a fine grab, Jack. <laughs> you m m m m m m make me happy. <laughs> but now the question is, can Speedman m m make audiences happy in what's being called the most expensive... You don't want to say anything. We're going to get in trouble. <laughs> we got time for your agent? We can't comment on it. I was literally about to say, where is this timestamp going? <laughs> Please be careful. She's, she's like, you got to tiptoe around <laughs> this one. It's, That's Maria Menounos. <laughs> she's like, with the box off. Man, <laughs> oh, Stam, I love this movie. You lost, got some face time. And who here's a key grip? <laughs> you? It's the supplier of the Seaburn. Who's the Seaburn guy? They're always weird. Hit that director in the face really hard. Hit that team star in the face really hard. <laughs> to su support guys, like, are you sure? <laughs> oh. <laughs> ow, ow. <laughs> child turns him into a little snot. So that guy's supposed to be a Green Beret. Yeah, you see, it? he's got the uh, he's got fifth, tab. seventh group flash on one of his. And he's got a special things. forces tab, but then he's also got the. Um, I forget what that one is. Is it? Is it 110? Is no. He has 82nd, doesn't he? Mm -mm. The horse. The horse soldier? Oh, first calf. First calf, there yep. you go. So, yeah, so Nick Nolte, also awesome actor in this movie. Yeah, he crushes it. He's perfect. You know when what? his hands come out. The crazy thing about this movie is, if I recall, when it when they were advertising this movie before it came out, Tom Cruise was not in anything. Yeah, I think it was supposed to be a surprise that he so was I, Yeah, I remember watching it. I think I watched it in theaters, and all we're like, is that, is that Tom, Tom Cruise? Yeah. Like, Tom Cruise? <laughs> And of he, all people? You have to remember that he did that in, like, the height of his career, like, to where he wasn't dressing up as a fat, bald guy ever. No. He was always <laughs> the cool star of the show. Yeah. So for him to come in and be essentially a supporting actor as, like, this fat, fat hand, hairy, <laughs> bald guy was just, like, a shock to everyone's yeah. system. Every part of this movie is a shock to the system. Yeah. There's not Love movies it. like this anymore. No. That working be theory is that he... He's obviously in show business, right? There's a lot in show business. Mm -hmm. So I'd imagine the only thing that would motivate him to partake in such a role is his disdain for people that he's yeah. making fun of, right? Oh, Maybe, yeah. yeah. So he gets his chance to, like, let out him. He's, he's embodying every producer slash agent or whatever he's ever yeah. had to work with. Yeah, that's a good point. I love that. And he did it perfectly. Yeah, 82nd Airborne, too. He's got oh, a yeah, Ranger right. right there on his He's got everything on his vest. Yeah. <laughs> Big ass titties. <laughs> yeah, it's so much C4. All right, pause it. It was like three blicks. Bro uh, <laughs> I don't know if I want to say bricks or bras. Blicky blacker. Blickety blacks. Big ass titties. <laughs> Big ass titties. <laughs> I was like three bricks of C4 attached to that tree. Was it? I didn't count it, but yeah. I've never seen red C4. Maybe civilian C4.
Bro, he would have lit up that whole <laughs> fucking jungle. Everyone would have been dead. And on top That's... of that, they were in like the perfect ambush position. They had the yeah. guys all in the tree line. They're in an They're open field. Nice clearing. They had the high ground. Every single one of them would have been dead. Yep. That was one of those, yeah, like you said earlier, it's like you come in, it's like this lull, and then like all of a sudden everything just opens up. Yeah. That was it's it like, for them. Yeah, they're waiting for you. It's the perfect position to get ambushed. I would hate to have to fight in the jungle. Something we're going to talk about in an upcoming Beers and Breakdowns with We Were Soldiers. Yeah. <laughs> jungle sucks. Yeah, especially with all those uh, canals that they had and mm-hmm. the roots underneath the ground. Tunnels. He- or, yeah, tunnels. Huge disadvantage for anybody trying to fight in that. So I just thought it was funny because it's like as accurate as they pretty much are in this movie. Yeah, it's like they accurately, are. It's very accurate. It's super accurate. They're accurately like actors trying to play like soldiers and getting tied up with these uh, actual uh, fighters. This scene is <laughs> ridiculous because they would have just been all smoked. <laughs> But I love how they're so like still thinking it's a movie, so they're confident just shooting back, yeah. not really taking cover. Got complete blanks. They're not shooting anything, but yet, you know, they're still just so confident. Yeah. It. The cool thing is he did the front roll, and I imagine that that's what The combat got, roll. Yeah. The guy's awesome. like, whoa. Yeah. Wait a second. These guys are ninjas. They're so. trained. Yeah. They, they've seen a thing or two. <laughs> Something <I laughs> is coming in. 100%. But even with Nick Nolte's character, right? Like, he's playing a Stolen Valor guy, and he has all the hallmarks of a Stolen Valor guy. Yeah. He has an SF uh, crest on his on his uniform. He's got 82nd second Airborne, 82nd. First Cav. He's got Ranger. Like, he's got every unit known to man. There's probably, they, like, Air Force units and Navy on there. Yeah, it's a good point. And think about that. It's one thing to do right. It's hard enough to do right right. How hard can it be to do r- wrong right, right on purpose? <laughs> yeah. yeah to do like, wrong right. Yeah, it's hard yeah. to say it right. Yeah. You're doing wrong right on purpose. Like, that's got to be so difficult. Like, how do we make Nick Nolte look the part completely, but to those in the know, look at him and obviously know that he's not telling the truth. Right, yeah. You have way too many unit patches on you. This whole, like, you got to get him in the shit. <laughs> like, who's going to say that shit? Like, you sound ridiculous. But it fits so well that even most people watching were like, yeah, maybe yeah. he was in that unit for a little bit, and then yeah. he went on to SF, and who, who f- knows? <laughs> but he sold me on it until his f- claws came off, you know? Yeah. And I'm like, ah. You got hands? He's like, what about the book? And he's like, nah, I made it all up. <laughs> I was Coast Guard. <laughs> <laughs> There's so many dudes like this on the internet. Ah, a lot of them respond to every time I post a ruck trainer. <laughs> Why? This is what they sound like. This is every comment on the ruck trainer. Why wouldn't you just use a real ruck? <laughs> and it's like, if I have to explain that to you, then you're basically Nick Nolte from Tropic Thunder, and you need to go write a book about some experiences that you've never had. <laughs> because that's what you sound like. Pause. Third group jelly beans. Supply guys like, oh, I love jelly beans. Get the fuck out of here! Jelly beans are my jelly beans, man. Like I already got you that girl last week. Get out of here, my jelly beans. Oh no. Sorry, I gotta make the third group. That's dirty. Not retarded. Not retarded. Tom Hanks, Forrest Gump. Logan, yes, retarded, maybe. Braces on his legs. But he's trying to face up next to the ping pong competition. Dang. Turn the pimp up next to the ping pong competition. Dang. You and me both retarded. Never go for retarded. You don't buy that? That's Sean Penn, 2001, I understand. Remember? Wherefore we taught, went home empty handed. How did he say it with straight face, dude? How did he say that? <laughs> Wherefore we taught, I know, right? I want to like, see. How many takes did they have? Slow, to yes. We taught it, baby. Dude, he, <laughs> he's a. Dude, now we taught it. And Vince Stiller just left there, just like, yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> it's like you believe that he was like, 
<laughs> yeah. It's like, dang it, I, I ruined my career. Up. I went full. I should have never went full. Right now, <laughs> seriously, my skin hurts. Melt from the peanut gallery. Into the water, ladies. No, 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 man. Let me take a look at that map real quick. Why is everybody all obsessed with the map? Because we're tired of being the tram donkeys, acting like you some one-man GPS. God damn it. We lost. We f***ing super lost, man. <laughs> Tell them, McCluskey. He's so Tell good. them what time it is. <laughs> I don't believe you, people. <laughs> what do you mean, you people? What do you mean? You people. Yo, Robert Downey Jr. stuck it so hard, it dude. It was beautiful. And I, I want to see like, the What outtake. do you mean, you people? Like, <laughs> how anyone on set did not pee their pants <laughs> laughing? I have no idea. Like, this uh, shit is comedy genius. It's comedy gold, son. Yeah. It's acting genius. It's acting genius. It's beautiful. I love it. It's, it's one thing to act serious. I think it's a whole new level to do offensive, funny, on cue. It, it's insane. Right. Like, yeah. he took it to the, the highest, hardest level. Because at the at the same time, you're still a white dude. Yeah. <laughs> bordering this line of ruining your career. Yeah, oh, for sure. Like, most people border the line of a flop movie, and then they could rebound on the next movie. Yeah. He's bordering the line of ruining his entire Career. Oh, he's he's pegged this whole movie. The he's whole like movie. right there. The whole time Jack Black didn't give a f dude. He just wants some coke. Yeah. <laughs> this, you know, this is one of the one things, one of the one errors that's not period correct is uh, Ben Stiller's rifle. He's got an extendable buttstock like a, a modern M4 would have, not like oh, the old yeah. school M16s. Yeah. But even then, the because you know. it's a spoof, in a... It could have been a mistake on the production part. They so might have you're done just it on like, purpose. Like, you could have done it on purpose to be like, we can't be too period correct. Yeah. It's like, you can't go wrong with this movie. You can't mess I it know. up. You can't even pick it apart. Soundtrack's beautiful. Yep. Wait, did you catch that? That's the guy from the Fast and the Furious. That's what I was going to yeah. say, yeah. <laughs> like, what do you think, Lance? 48? 58? That's the guy? 48 sounds nice. <laughs> he's yeah. scary in Fast and the Furious and this. He's got, he's got a, he's got sweat. Like a resting scary face. Like yeah. He does. Yeah. All right, so one of the very few serious moments that you could actually pick from this is why we're taught never leave our trash, never yeah. leave signs of life, because you never know when you're being tracked. Mm -hmm. So he found his booty sweat, and he knows that he ain't drinking no booty sweat. They don't sell booty sweat mm -hmm. in the jungle. They don't got Where booty, that booty sweat, sweat out there. Come from? <laughs> they yeah. got a different type of booty sweat. <laughs> it's, it's actual sweat. <laughs> they don't need it in a can. It's salty and it's nasty, <laughs> and you don't want to taste that. Except on Friday night, after a couple of drinks. Oh my God, what a treat. <laughs> <laughs> um, a booty sweat, all natural, no sugars added. <laughs> <laughs> Why? <laughs> Abel's so disapproving booty, booty, right booty, now. Booty, 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 right ah, there. Ah, ah. Abel's like, you nasty. You nasty. When you need the booty sweat, <laughs> uh, you need it like Jesus. <laughs> Don't bring Jesus into this. Are you kidding me? Did you make this whole goddamn thing up? Dude, you're even in the service? Yes. Carson. Coast Guard. Coast Guard. Sanitation Department. Oh, Sanitation God. Department. You're a garbage man. <laughs> FLT back lies to me and the whole goddamn US of A. I wrote the book as a tribute. I'm a patriot. Yeah, you're the Milli Vanilli of Patriots, okay? <laughs> <laughs> in the Vietnam War. It's like, it's like punching the American flag in the face, goddammit. That whole speech he just gave? We just need to put that out there to all Stolen Valors. Yes. You're the all Millie Stolen Vanilli Valor. You're the Manili, Millie, what? Millie Vanilli. So if you guys don't understand, maybe you're under the age of That's what the 25 to 30. Millie Vanilli was a group that rose to fame in the mid-90s probably. Jump around? And no, they sang, girl, you know it's true. But they, ooh, had, the, they ooh, had the... Ooh, I love you. They, they had were the like, stuff on backwards, didn't no, they? No, that, that's crisscross. That's crisscross. They yeah. were like racially ambiguous, so they were like my skin tone. They had like long black curly hair. What the and fuck And they put out all these say? songs racially, racially ambiguous. ambiguous. Like you couldn't really tell. Like they were like, they towed all the lines. You couldn't really tell what they were. Shit, this relates all the way back to compact disc. 
Yes. <laughs> what ruined their career. Exactly. <laughs> so they were popular because of this, the songs that they had, but then they're doing a performance oh, one time. Oh, I don't know what you're talking about. And the, the twins, track, right? They the... weren't really singing the song. It was yes. other people singing the songs, but they weren't as attractive, so they had Millie Vanilli as the face lip syncing. Okay, now I remember. They had, they had a live... the long curly hair, the yes. good looking. Yeah. And they had the live performance, and their track started skipping. So while they're singing, it's like, girl, you know it. Girl, you know it. Girl, you know it. And it oh, just kept skipping. Yes, I remember. That. And then they were like, it came out as like these big frauds because nobody knew like, why would somebody lip sync? They're not singing yeah. their own song. And then it came out. And then that's why he said, you're the Millie Vanilli of Patriots. So if you're younger than 25 to 30, you might not have known that. The more you know, the better you are. The more you know. Isn't that an infomercial from <laughs> PBS or something? The also, more you if know. you're under 25, you might not know that. <laughs> well, PBS? Yeah, the more you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we damn, we are you old. You might not know. Yo, Millie, Millie Vanilli. I don't know the name. <laughs> they were hella good looking, though. They were, they, yeah. I'm sorry, a dingle ain't your baby. That's a true story. They lost a kid. You about to cross some <laughs> lines. <laughs> For 400 years. That word. Just kept us down. <laughs> That's the theme song for the Jefferson. Oh, I thought it was Nelly. Yeah, just because the theme song don't make it not true. <laughs> don't make it not true. <laughs> Pause it. 400 years. 400 years. <laughs> now we up in the big leagues. I thought that was Nelly. I remember it from the Nelly song, From the too. Nelly song, right? It did come from he's the like, Jefferson. He's like, now we up in the big leagues. Yep. What's that? What's the exact song? Dude, Nelly was crushed by the Street Sweeper. Remember oh, that yeah. one? So that was like 2002, 2001, 2002. Ooh, that whole damn, album was old. hot. Oh, Nelly was fire, Dude, that whole bro. Album. Everybody had a Band-Aid on their cheek when I fucking know, Nelly so came out with weird. Street Sweeper. Um, and what else? Gosh, damn. Now we, up we start in the wearing movies? the Air Force Ones. Dude, Nelly was killing it. I thought he was. I thought he was gonna say the whole thing to Nelly. Yeah. But then he's the guy said that's the song of the Jeffersons. I was like, oh, okay, that's yeah. that's fair too. But damn. That's yeah. Whenever so he now says I it, think I... was was Nelly referencing the Jeffersons? Oh yeah, he said... yeah, he sampled the song. Oh okay, cool. Or he remade it or whatever. Yeah, that's dope. So he's paying homage yeah, to yeah, the yeah. Jeffersons. Yeah, that's tight. And so it's like even then, it's like you're just tying in so much culture, so many layers. Yeah. Is, I love it. I love it. I love it. I just it. love how Robert Downey Jr. Dude, he hugged him. He, he hugged him. Bro. What I love is he goes to me in Australia because he talks about a crocodile Dundee, and he's like, "That's a national treasure." You yeah. Better cross. And then the other dingo ate the baby. He's like, "You better cross some lines." Cross some lines. And then he goes from Australian to just I'm like right, for 400 like... years <laughs> that word's held us down. <laughs> so in booty sweat. It's mine. He's just like spinning. He's like, yeah, what he's is like, this guy talking about? Did we get to this point, bro? And he's saying I'm like a true professional. He's like, listen, guy, you're fucking crazy. I'm not going to lose my no, shit I'm going to take you back. Like, I'm going to take you back. Bro, I love it. This movie is fucking bananas in its level of just awesome and I, I love how like there's so much like background banter too like now you got jack black who's <laughs> he's going not through listening his own to crisis. any of it he's yeah. not listening to any of it because he just wants some coke or some heroin or any drug he can lick <laughs> off your b he will take dude he will sniff cocaine out of your b like, at this i'm gonna bite that water buffalo <laughs> <laughs> And one thing I didn't notice is that the water buffalo is with them the whole movie. Yeah. <laughs> At that one point, they're petting it and it's like licking the guy's face. <laughs> like the end scene, the water buffalo is still there. <laughs> like, did you carry that? Could you imagine like reading the script? He's like, wait, so we're going to have a water buffalo for the rest of the movie? You had to pay somebody to take a water <laughs> puff for the whole scene. Like, why? It didn't uh, add anything to it. It yeah. got to the end of the movie, and the water buffalo was there, and I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> I was like, I don't remember this part, but it's that water beautiful. buffalo does not go away. <laughs> he's like, it's just so there. good. He's just Jack Black's homie. He's like his other half, oh. dude. All right, let's keep watching this. This is the last question. Who is this? This is Flaming Dragon. Okay, Flaming Dragon. Face. First... Take a big step back and literally f your own face. <laughs> Fat face. And I will rain down on a godly fucking firestorm upon you. You're going to have to call the fucking United Nations and get a fucking binding resolution to keep me from fucking destroying you. I am talking scorched earth, mother. I will massacre you. I will f you up. Tell me that every one of us hasn't talked to a private like that. 
<laughs> you find out who that was. <laughs> I just love how they're all stunned on the other side of the phone. They're like, <laughs> dude, I ever love that. if you haven't if you haven't been a sergeant in the U.S. military <laughs> and talked to a private like that, you haven't lived. <laughs> Yo, when a private fully fully pisses you off. And you go 100% Tom Cruise ham on him like that, it's the best feeling on planet Earth, <laughs> my guy. And I've done it more than I like <laughs> to admit. Oh, yeah. We had uh, we were in out process or in processing. So I was, I was just getting out of active duty, and I'm getting into National Guard because I did my one year as National Guard before I was like, this. Because I was a cop in National Guard. Mm-hmm. And we're in processing. And so I'm sitting there. I'm the only SF guy there. It's all privates. And I'm like, a staff sergeant, promotable, special forces, like, what am I doing here? And there's another staff sergeant. He looks at me. He's like, what's up, dude? I'm like, what's up, bro? And he's like, hey, guys, I know we got a bunch of privates. We're about to have a general, a two-star general come in. When you talk to her, I don't know who she's from. I don't care. Whatever. Two-star general is two-star general. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's pretty damn high. Big deal. That's a big deal. So all he said to the privates, respectfully, when you talk to her, stand up, be at attention, show respect, ask your questions, or don't say anything. It's your choice, but make sure you follow military customs. You guys all just graduated basic, so it should be easy deal for you. I was like, all right, cool, whatever. Two-star comes in, gives a speech. Do we have any questions? This private is sitting over in the corner. He goes, yep, I was just wondering... If, um, like, da 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 doesn't stand up, Ooh. doesn't stand at attention, doesn't even talk like a normal human being that's been out of high school for more than five minutes, and just completely disrespects this. Lost all military bearing. Lost all military bearing. So my blood just starts boiling. And I was like, obviously not going to do anything in front of the general. General's like, all right, thank you guys so much. Appreciate your time. Good luck in your you know, military career. She walks out. And the staff sergeant's like, just shaking his head. And I looked at him and I was like, all right, I'm saying something. (laughs) Looking back on it, I wish I didn't say anything. But he was like, does anyone have anything? And I hadn't said anything up to this point. And I was like, and he was like, what's up, brother? And I was like, when did you graduate basic? And she was like, two weeks ago. And I was like, so when you were there, didn't they teach you how to talk to a general? And the one thing that he asked you was to respect a general and to stand at attention when you talk. And I lost it, dude. <laughs> I lost it. And so I screamed at her. And then as my blood started coming back down, I sat back down and I was like, Whew. and I looked around the room and everybody was in shock. <laughs> and I, that's the moment that I realized that like, I had just gotten back from war not too long ago (laughs) and like I don't belong here and I shouldn't be in processing with privates and nobody was on my level. (laughs) The staff sergeant that's supposed to have my back at the front was awestruck. He was like, I don't know what to do. And so I just sat there and I was like. I'm out of my element, and I just left, dude. I will bid you adieu. (laughs) I was like, (laughs) and I, farewell, (laughs) ladies and gentlemen. This is your introduction to Special Forces. I hope that you apply if you ever feel the need. Goodbye. You just got up and left. I left. I left. I couldn't do it. I left. I didn't have one single supporter in that entire room. Everyone looked at me and said, Special Forces suck. That guy's a and I just walked oh out. Oh my God. And I never, ever went back to another in processing briefing again. <laughs> and nobody asked me to. And nobody questioned me when I didn't show up. I was like, nope, That's I'm done. Funny. Oh, man. I lit that chick up. And they were not happy about it. <laughs> I wonder what she's doing now. I wonder if she, <laughs> next time she met a general, she's like, yes, ma'am. She's <laughs> like, I'm on her feet. Dude, I was the enemy. It wasn't like, how could you not listen to that staff sergeant that literally just told you to do that? It was, how could you be so aggressive? Yeah. And I was like, this is not what I'm used to. So I was like, oh, I'm just backing out. 
Like, like one, the Homer Simpson going through the bushes. Yeah, <laughs> just, just back and back. So one time we were uh, doing a briefing for the infantry cats. So I was still on the ODA. We're about to go to training. And one of the infantry cats falls asleep. And I'm giving my brief. So I was like, hey, guys, you know, I, I know you see us doing a lot of high-speed stuff. Like, we're always running and gunning on the range. I was like, but understand that we don't get to that point without safety. It was a safety brief. Mm -hmm. We don't get to that point without safety, and safety is the main priority, and we work our way up slowly. So to you, it may seem like this big jump, but to us, it's been a lot of small steps leading up to it of safety. So make sure that on the range at all times, if you want to be in our favor, safety is number one priority. If you're safe, we'll let you get more and more leniency and do more and more things that we do and get more freedom. Right. I was like, but you won't get to that point if you're not aware of safety. And I look over, and this infantry cat's sleeping. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I just start doing it again, and I was like, my guy, wake him up. And he wakes up, he's like, yeah. And I was like, trying to contain myself, and I was like, somebody needs to watch the ammo 24-7 so it doesn't get stolen. You just volunteered for the job. <laughs> And like a true infantryman, Roger Sergeant, I apologize. And I was like, all right, he's winning my heart a little bit. <laughs> and then one of his infantry buddies comes up. I think he, he may have been a sergeant, whatever. He comes up to me, goes, hey, brother, just so you know, he's one of our best soldiers. He was on CQ all night that he volunteered for another person. And so he hadn't slept all night. That's why he nodded out. I was like, Roger that. Went up to him after and I was like, hey, bro, I heard what happened. I got you, just so you know, we're cool. You're back off ammo duty, but I'm going to give it to you for the first day, but you're not on it the whole time, you know? But that's that's an infantryman's yeah. mindset. He didn't tell me, but sir, yeah, yeah. I was on it. He, he didn't give me any excuses. Just he didn't give accept me. He accepted a, like a week worth of ammo duty and said, Roger, Sergeant, I apologize. And turn, yes. come to find out, he was only tired because he was taking over for another buddy yeah. and being a good up dude. All night. Up yeah. all night. So anyway, it's just a difference in an infantry, like no excuses, get the job done, mission first mindset versus the soft pogan where it's like, but yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I didn't know. Different levels of motivation for sure. Yeah. You're in, in, you know, so anyway, that stuff matters, but. What's the name? Lance. Listen here, Lance. Lance. <laughs> what the f*** did I just hear, Lance? <laughs> Lance? No. You're thinking of dangling your dice on Lance's forehead. No, hell no. What? Come on, look. Man, everyone's gay once in a while. If you're in time, eh, I will literally s*** right now. <laughs> Work the pipe. Swallow the gravy. <laughs> Get over here, buddy. Let's do this. Yeah. <laughs> it's like... Uh. It's like you think the scene is super hilarious and then Jack Black comes and just finishes it off. <laughs> could, you, could you imagine editing that scene together? And be like, we broke the internet and then we nailed it. Oh my gosh, bro. That shit's so hilarious. Like, Everybody gay once in a while. Everybody gay once in a while. He said, nah, that's a Nance. I love the <laughs> Where is your fuck? American! My fuck. Oh shit. Here's my motherfucking fuck! I'm a land farmer, motherfucker! Yeah! <laughs> I'm a land farmer, motherfucker! <laughs> Yeah, that's every 18 Bravos first gunfight <laughs> on the planet. He said, I'm a left, I'm a mother. F <laughs> Hell yeah. Dude, my first gunfight, I was so happy. I could have said I'm a left, I'm a mother. F I was so stoked, bro. <laughs> I had my shit. We were riding up in the Razors, and the 2 1 was just going at it. Brrr, minigun. He was shooting the minigun so much, it was actually pissing me off. Because he was, instead of like, what, 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 yeah. he had to just be, <laughs> he ended up exploding one of the barrels. Ooh, yeah, and I had, to, I had to cut it and pull it out because it exploded. So I couldn't get 
either barrel out of the sleeve because yeah. both of them exploded like this. Oof. So I had to cut them off to rip them out and replace his barrel. Now let's jump to the final scene of this review of basically you guys just having some drinks and laughing with us to, in my opinion, the GOAT of acting. See you guys on the next episode. Make sure you drop it in the comments which ones you'd like to see next. If you made it this far, congratulations. You're one of our people. You're a fan. You support this channel. We appreciate you. Hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button. And drop a comment as to which one you want to see. And we'll see you guys on the next episode.